Today we're going to be talking about the importance of lapels. You may ask yourself, what is a lapel? Why does it matter? I'm going to tell you. This right here is a lapel. It goes down around your neckline. And right here, this is the most common, versatile, most utilitarian lapel you'll find on almost every jacket is a notch lapel. So what we have here is it cuts out right here at the top. And this is really, really, really important because this is probably the most casual of the lapels. And so there's a couple different versions and a couple different applications in which you'll wear one jacket with one lapel versus another. Prime example is a shawl lapel, which I'll show you now. This one right here is only for tuxedos. If you're wearing a casual jacket or you're wearing a suit with this on it, it's not, it's not correct. Or a velvet jacket, that's the only other exception. But pretty much you're mainly wearing this for tuxedos, for events and such like that. So when it comes in to having this type of lapel, it wraps around the collar, giving a really nice shape makes it very formal. Traditionally, it's mainly paired with satin, but not all the time, but mostly it is. And satin is this black shiny material here. And that we'll get into later about what the difference between a suit and tuxedo is. But for now, we're just focusing on the starters. This is a shawl lapel. This is something that you only wear for formal occasions. You're not wearing it with jeans and a t-shirt. It's tuxedo only. We have a peak lapel. This is a peak lapel, points up like this. I think, yep, I have a peak lapel on my jacket too. So a peak lapel is pretty cool because you can put it on a tuxedo and it looks fantastic. You can also put it on a suit, it looks fantastic. This is kind of the hybrid middle ground, right? Where this you can put on a black suit and it looks very formal. You could also put it on a sport jacket and it can be casualized, but it still will always have that little bit of formal touch to it. And so this is a cool way to kind of make your suit stand out, make it a little different, have a little flair to it without going crazy and having the wildest colors and all the more flamboyant options that you could choose. But the key thing to know here is that there's a point, right? And this is what points up. And now on here, you can see this point starts around here. This is actually a cool segue into something else called a gorge line. The gorge line is where the lapel meets the jacket. So this is a higher gorge line, but it can go higher and it could be all the way up here and the peak could actually be pointing off the edge of the jacket. Not my personal favorite, but if you go back and you start looking at older photos and things like that, the gorge line used to be a lot lower, which means like those 1970 jackets where it cuts out right here and stuff like that. That's one of the major things that's changed as far as style in the last, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years. But the peak lapel has always been in style and it will continue to be. It's very utilitarian, really good, great jacket, great overall lapel. Something a little sportier than a notch lapel without being too much, right? Notch lapel, navy jacket, also has two buttons. This is probably the most common thing in suit history that you can have is a two button, notch lapel jacket. Now, here's where things get fun. You can also have a one button jacket. It's one button, it's got a peak lapel. You can have a notch lapel with one button. You can have a peak lapel with one button, a shawl lapel with one button. However, where I personally draw the line is I don't like three button jackets, unless they're an overcoat, a trench coat, something along those lines, but not for a suiting jacket, it just seems a little outdated and unless it's done really tastefully it might be a little too much but who knows it'll probably come back in style just like everything else does so one of the differences between a suit and a sport jacket is that a sport jacket traditionally is too bold to wear as a full suit and that's really the big difference not to mention there's no pants that's the other difference is that a suit is matching fabric of jacket and trouser versus a sport jacket is just the jacket and one fabric, particularly and commonly pretty flamboyant, pretty out there, pretty outlandish. Now, there's no saying that you couldn't wear this as a full suit and there's no direct rules, but that is pretty much the difference between the two. And I kind of fall in line with that. There's some stuff that maybe I get a little more fun with, but never, not, not as crazy as maybe this. But that's not to say you can't. 
right? It's all about finding your personal style and what you're comfortable with. And as you dress up more and as you wear different things, you'll start to explore new options, wear new things and pick up different colors maybe you wouldn't have. And that's a really fun part about this process is growing and trying new things as you start to build your own personal style. What I found for myself is as I get something new and I wear it, I get compliments. People tell me that they like it. I look good in it. I feel good in it, right? Then I'll maybe take that risk on something else. And so it's all about kind of moving along and just kind of pushing the needle one day at a time. Doesn't mean you have to go out and buy something crazy tomorrow, but you also can and change it up and switch it up. But style overall is kind of a progressive thing and it won't stay still. You'll look back at pictures of you 10 years ago and go, geez, I was so stupid. I can't believe I wore that, right? But it's relevant to the time and everything. Our goal is to kind of minimize that so that hopefully when you look back in time after seeing this, you go, I look really sharp. And there's some people that do that. There's a photo of James Brown in front of his private jet that he bought and he's wearing a black turtleneck black slacks, black shoes, and he looks sharp and the photo is timeless. It's from the 60s, 70s, and he looks like he could have been getting off of a plane today and still would fit in. And that's what we're trying to accomplish now, right? So this is a single breasted jacket. So the buttons connect right at the opening and then that's it. Whereas what I am currently wearing is a double breasted jacket, which means it folds over itself. So it closes over like this and then back over like this. The button here on the inside and then there is a hole on the inside here, on the very end of your jacket. Now you take that and it goes flat against your stomach. You take this button on the inside, that goes inside here. So it keeps the jacket flat. And then this folds over and buttons to the other side. It's really simple. Now when it comes to buttoning a double-breasted jacket, what do you button? Do you button all of them? You have an extra button there and you're not buttoning it. What do you do? You don't have to. I don't because I treat it the same way I treat a suit jacket, which would be never button the last button or the bottom button. On here, you only button the top button if you're going to button a button. The rule is with three buttons is sometimes always never. Sometimes being the top button, always being the middle button, never being the final button. Now, on a two button jacket, it would just be always never. And then on a one button jacket, it would just be always. One other part that's really cool about looking for different designs as far as the suit goes is that the pockets are pretty interesting to dive into as well. So this pocket here, these are straight pockets. So they cut across straight, right? And now the difference with that and the suit that I have on is that the pockets are on a slant. The slant of the pocket actually wraps around your body, which creates a really clean line. So it's aesthetically pleasing. So when someone's looking at you, it's really flattering to have it kind of curve around your body rather than straight cut your body almost into sections. So that's why I always prefer having a nice little slant on the side here. It just gives a nice clean line. Is these pockets here are not only on an angle, but they also tuck inside. So you can have the flap out or you can have the flap in. And so that's just a nice feature because you can switch it up. Sometimes I have them tucked in, which looks nice. Sometimes I leave them out. Now, originally that was made for being inside outside when you were in the army or military, where you tuck the pockets in if you were inside and leave them out if you were outside. That's where that rule came from. And that's why we have these today. But it is nice when you're able to do that, have the little pockets in, it just gives a different look subtle little things you can change without your garment without having to get a whole new garment in order to make it look different. But this is called a ticket pocket and it's this extra little pocket right here. Some people like to put it on a on the sport jacket. Some people put on tuxedos and things like that. It's not a big game changer. It doesn't make one thing more formal or one less formal, but it was originally made for tickets in London for the trolley, your train that pretty much allows you to put extra stuff in, makes the jacket asymmetrical, just gives a little more style flavor. And this, it's all just little stuff that you can do to make your suit knowledge a little more versatile so that when you're looking through different suits at the rack or whether you're getting one custom made, you have a little bit more information to say, this is exactly what I want. And you have more information to say why it is you want those type of things. So 
just some cool stuff to know. Something to be on the lookout for that's pretty neat as well is these right here. These are functioning buttons. So they actually all work. There's a real sleeve slit. It's functionally, they work, they open, they close. Now, these used to be called surgeon's cuffs because when the operating room was freezing in order to do surgery, they would still have their suit jackets on and then have other garments over top. And they would roll up their sleeves in order to do that, the cuffs needed to be functioning. So this is a really cool thing to look out for when you're buying clothes because this actually is a symbol of a nicer garment. And not all garments will have this, obviously depending on where you're shopping and things like that, but it is a really cool touch. It does serve a purpose. And if anything, it just makes the garment that much nicer.